Now, if you all look this way, in, in the um, 1825, when the school was built, one of the things that you did before you entered the classroom is, ladies, you always showed respect to the teacher by giving a curtsy. Gentlemen, you bowed. Now, with that in mind, there's so many of us, it would take a long time for each one of you to do that to get in the classroom. So, ladies, to curtsy, please. Gentlemen, bow. You show respect. Thank you. When you walk into the school, you are no going to notice that in each desk, there's going to be, I'm trying to do this without making noise, a slate about this big, a piece of chalk, and a cloth to wipe the slate clean. Now when you come in, you're just going to sit down. You're not going to pick up the chalk. You're not going to write your name or any little scribbles. We'll tell you when it's time. One other thing is when you come into the classroom, it's always with very quiet voices because it was expected that when you came into the classroom, you were quiet. And once school began, there was not even any whispering. Let's say nobody has hats on. Oh, that's good because if you wore a hat, you needed to leave it in, in the outside foyer here. Um, you, it showed respect. You didn't wear a hat in the classroom. Con considering that this morning we were actually chilly, now we're standing here in the sun. Okay, this is quite, quite a difference of time between morning and afternoon. Okay, the, the adults sit over on the yellow chair, okay, the bleachers. Sounds good. Oh, there's plenty. There's sit in the back. There's room for six in the back. The school was built without what they call privy, an outbuilding, the porta potty. So for the first 11 years, if you needed to go to the bathroom, you just went out into the woods. Um, that's the way it was. And the scholars of your age didn't think anything of it. We know at one point that there was a, the um, outhouse out back. We know from other schools in Stowe that they had two doors, a door for a boy and a door for a girl. Um, but we don't know exactly what this school had. And I noticed that you're all wearing shoes today. It's warm in the summer or any warm weather, no one wore shoes. You came barefoot. Oh, oh, think about it. Parents, you wanted to make sure they saved the shoes. They were very expensive. So you didn't wear shoes in the warm weather whatsoever. And I noticed, um, it's very interesting how we're seated here. When you came in, um, which is very interesting, is that we have a lot of boys on this side and we have one over here. This was the girl's side. This was the boy's side. <laughs> All right, we're almost in reverse in this class. Now in the very back, the, at the very back, those students, the, the, four, the three in the back, have a long table top, desktop. This is one of the original desks. It was, they're bolted to the floor. There's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. In the front here, were always the very youngest children. Some could have been age three or four. They were sent to school very, very young. And then it went back, not necessarily by age, but by your ability to do math and your ability to read. So many times, their children hadn't been to school for a while, so some of the younger children were actually had more education than the older students had. So if we had the little children up front here, the teacher would get them started with their A, B, Cs, whatever they were learning, and she would ask one of the scholars in the back, the older, who had a very good command of their of the reading, to come up and help these children. Then she would go and go back and forth and back and forth. If this was a cold winter month, the likelihood that your teacher would be a man. Because the men, they would have men come in the winter because the older boys came. 
The older boys who had been working on the farm all summer now are coming to school. And some of them could be 16, 17 years old, and they felt that they needed a strong hand to control these older boys who haven't, hadn't attended school that much. Take a look around here. I see some holes in desks. How many people have, not everyone, yeah, yeah that's okay. All right, most every, did everyone have a, see the hole? Why do we have a hole? Yes? For the ink, yeah. They would be round containers that would fit into the hole and you would have your pens. Some of the pens were actually feather and the teacher would have a knife and she would make the point on it. Some of them would have what they call nibs. They would put a point on it and some might have even been a pen that was a metal pen with the point. And, but you didn't begin to use ink until after you mastered the slate. Oh, that reminds me. I hope none of you are thirsty. Because none of you, no one volunteered to get water from the spring across the street. Every morning, thank you, Zach. <laughs> every morning, uh, a student would be in charge of going across the street, the parking lot, down the hill to the spring, filling up the bucket. And this is what you would, everyone would use the same cup. And this is what, how you got your water for the day. And we know that Zach will help us if, if we get very thirsty. You would have also all come to school carrying your lunch pail. And your mother would put, a, put your cloth in it, and here's your cover. Uh, everyone would be bringing their own lunch, whatever they had in their, in their house. So you, they had ink, but we didn't use ink until you were very good with the slate. The slates were actually a lot bigger. Okay, these are the real things. These were used in this classroom. We're very fortunate that the beginning of Harvard Road, one of the, two of the houses are still there. We had the Gates family, the Peck family. And in their attic, after all these years, the, the, the school supplies that they used in this school were saved. And if you look very closely, we have some of the names of the children who own these slates. And we have, we have their textbooks. So they would have, their, every child would come with their own, at this age, their own textbooks from home. And then if you had a younger brother and sister, after you would keep passing the books down, you'd use the same books. So you might have a reader, and you might have a reader, but they might be different, but that's how you were going to learn to read. So once the children got proficient on the slates, they went to the ink. But I think we better practice with our slates first. So what I'd like you to do with your slate, pick up the chalk in your right hand. All right. Is that uncomfortable for anybody? Do we have any lefties? <laughs> ah, what a shame. And sorry, lefties weren't allowed in schools. You had to use your right hand. What do you think? Should we let her do it today? No. Yeah, we'll let you do it. Oh, right. Absolutely. Okay, because we are reenacting. We're reenacting. Now, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to give you an example right now, okay? You're not going to write the answer down. We're going to start with mental math, all right? You're going to do the math problem in your head, and then you're going to write the answer down. So we're just going to do one practice one. So you're not going to write anything. We're going to go to first grade level, OK? If I said 1 plus 2, um, don't write it down. Well, everyone together, what would you write? 3. OK. So what you're not going to do, all right? I'm going to borrow this, and he's going to race real. You're not going to do this, OK? Because you are going to be writing a good number, different numbers, okay? So make it just a little, little number, not, not too big. Um, and then when you're done, you take your cloth, if you'd written something, and you write, you wipe your slate clean. Okay, there's an expression called wipe, wipe your slate clean. They mean start fresh. And from what I've read is that a lot of times 
boys and girls, the scholars, would just take their sleeve and, and do this. Okay, so you're wiping your slate clean. And the teacher, you might even hear, if you to say it to your parents or your grandparents, they might know this expression. And sometimes you're having that no good, very bad day. And you just, you remember Alexander who had a no good, very bad day? And he just needs to wipe his slate clean and start all over again. All right, but now we're going to do the real thing. So right hand and one lefty here, here we go. Now you're only writing the answer, okay? Four times five. Write the answer. Okay, now, take, with that answer in your, you see, your, you see the answer. Now, minus, take away five. Just write the answer. Okay, take away five from your answer, and what do you have? All right. Okay, now we're going to switch, and we are going to do addition. We're going to add six to that answer. Okay, now with that answer, you're going to divide it by three. All right, your answer, hold your slides up. What is your answer? Seven. Seven. All right, excellent, excellent. Okay, wipe your slate clean. There we go. All right, we've done our math. Everyone all set? Here we go. Now, we're going to go to language arts. And we are going to do something with helping verbs. Have you ever heard that name? How about verb? Yeah. All right, we're, we're, we're going to help our verbs. Now, the helping verbs, if we had time, we could learn a rap. Are you ready? Here we go. It's be, is, am, are, was, were, being, been. Having, have, has, had, would, could, should, shall, will, ought, may, can, might, must, do, did, does. Those are all your helping verbs. All right? And that's a lot of fun when everyone knows it because you can do a great rap with it. Now we're going to take helping verbs and we're going to do it present tense. And I'm going to give an example. I'm going to do I, and my helping verb is am, B M. Okay, am. I am standing. So the verb is stand, and then I'm added I-N-G. Now, on your slate, you don't have to write I am, but write something that you are doing. I am, and write the next verb, and it has to have an I-N-G. Something you are doing. Okay, some of you are writing the whole sentence. That's what I can, I can say. That's okay. You don't, have, don't erase it. All right. How many said, I am sitting? <laughs> How many said, <coughs> I am writing? Uh, all right. Now, I've had people thinking. I, she's, she's reading. She has a book in her head that she's reading right now. Okay, who else? has Anybody else? I am Get staring. Staring, I see it, the T. Okay, he's staring. He's Wait, you're supposed to do what we were doing? Right now. That's okay. We're going to do another one. Let's do, now we're going to go to future. <laughs> All right. I will be. Our two helping words are will be. Something that you are going to be doing. Not right now, but maybe at school, maybe at home. I will be. Give me the verb in I-N-G. I will be, it's going to be in the future, your future tense. All 
All right. How many said playing? All right. Uh, how many people said eating? I want you to know that this morning's group, the majority of the students this morning said eating because it was just before lunch. All right, they, they were very focused on their food. They were eating. I will be dancing, I will be reading, I will be... Playing video games. Yeah, playing, you know, well, he's in the future. He wants video games. Playing, playing, I will be... Pardon? Okay, I will be riding, I will be traveling. Whoa. I will be walking. I'll be answering, <laughs> drawing. We got artists here. How about in the back road? I will be doing. She's going to do math. I will be going home today. Okay. And what's the last? Riding. She wants to ride back on the bus. That's a darn good thing because it's a long trip to think about walking. All right. Now, what I want you to do is take your cloth and erase, erase it. Okay, well, catch your, catch your chalk. Push, put the chalk, if you have a, a, a line, push it up to there. Put the slate up, push it up to the corner. Okay, that's perfect right there. Now this prudential committee over here, right here, sitting along the wall, these would have been men, okay, men, that lived in this district. They were voting members. They, were, they had the right to vote. Ladies, I'm sorry, women didn't vote at this time. They would be sitting here. They could come in any time they wanted to, but especially on the last day of school, they would come in because they wanted to hear your lessons. You have been preparing for quite a while, and many, everything has been memorized. Okay, now seven of you are going to be reenactors. And as reenactors, um, you can have your piece of paper because we are demonstrating what it was like. Now they're sitting there and they are very proud of you. Sometimes your parents came and they're just so proud of you. But the person that they're watching is me. Because they want to know how well as me, the teacher, did teaching you and we know this by reading their reports because every year there there were five schools and so and we had five school committees they would write up the number of students attended the number that were tardy the number that were absent and the number that had perfect attendance then the rest was how the teacher taught and many times the teachers were not asked to return because they thought the teachers could have done a better job and remember, the students could be young as three and four, they could go up to 16. So it was a very difficult situation to be in to keep, keep this all together. Um, with that thought, what did they judge you? They would judge you on your penmanship, how well you wrote. Now you've all practiced on the slate, and once you became very proficient with the slate, they would give you a copy book. Okay, and we are very fortunate again with the Peck family, the Gates Peck family, is that we have copy books. This is Henry Gates' copy book, and this it was 1837. This book is 179 years old. And in this, we see his writing, and Henry practiced and practiced and practiced. This was not busy work of just doing it over and over. He was getting his letters correct. And the other thing he wanted to do is that he, this ink would make blotches if he didn't do it carefully. And he made sure that he had very perfect writing on every single page. Not a piece, not a page is left blank. He did it over and over. Some of his other books, you can tell that towards the end, his handwriting got smaller. Mm -hmm. um, he would write down the math rules. He would write down his language arts, the parts of speech rules. He would write down social studies lessons, uh, all in his little book. So can you imagine 100, 
and 79 years ago. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have several people from your class help me reenact what it was like. Now they're going to, you have to remember the Prudential Committee is over here watching. Your classmates are watching. Your parents could be here. Um, sometimes you were brought up and just asked math questions. And you had in your head, mental math, you had to figure out the answer and explain how you thought it out. Just like you do it in your math today, where you write explanations. That's what they used to do. They would explain how they thought it out. So we are going to start with our math. And we have Devin and Zach. If you'd come up, please. All right, and since, come on over here, Zach, Zach, okay? Mainly because I have the microphone, okay? That's why we have to. Okay, but I'm going to, I'm going to start with Devin. All right, here we go. Now, this is out of a Gates book. This book was used in this classroom. And he, ha he has this information because he is a reenactor. This is, so he, is, he can reread his answer. It's just absolutely wonderful. Okay, here we go. James bought a slate for 15 cents and some pencils for six cents. If he had at first 30 cents, how much more has he to spend? Answer, 15 cents plus six cents equals 21 cents spent. Since James had 30 cents, he has nine cents remaining. That's right. And he would have thought that in his head. Okay, now Zach. If six copies of a book cost eight dollars, how much will twelve copies cost? Um, twelve is half of six. Um, therefore, um, eight eight times two equals sixteen. Be sixteen dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And he did it without the sheet. Way to go! Nice going, guys. All right. All right, now I have my people from my social studies. I have Matt, Meredith, and Grayson. Okay. Okay, we're going to start with Matt. In what is every citizen of the United States equal? In the United States, there is no nobility. Every citizen is equal in civil and Political. Political rights. Absolutely. Now you were just at Plymouth Plantation, where they were Englishmen, British citizens. All right. They had nobility. Now here, we in the United States have no nobility. We have a president and we have equal rights. That was very nicely answered. I'm just going to switch sides on you because I need her beside me. All right. Um, are you Meredith? Okay, good. Meredith. What types of transportation are numerous in the United States? Steamboats, canals, and railroads are used easily and rapidly to, from state to state. Isn't it amazing we have steamboats now? We have canals. We have railroads. We don't have to rely just on our horse and our horse and buggy, our horse and wagon. It is marvelous invention. Excellent. So you can stay there, stay there for a minute. All right, next page. How many states, territories, and districts are in the United States? In the United States, there are 30 states and five territories and one district, which is Washington, D.C. Excellent. Now, what is interesting with that is just five days ago, we had the 30th state. Does anyone remember what the 30th state was? We just have a brand new state. What do you think? No, that's Hawaii is still way out in the ocean. We, we aren't, no, it was Wisconsin, because we're still moving west. Hawaii is a long, that was our last at the very end, okay? So presently, how many states do we have? 2016. Whew, glad you know that. Okay, let's give them a round of applause. Way to go. All right. All right, now we come to the dialogue. In this dialogue, they're talking about cars and teams, not automobiles, 
not baseball teams or soccer teams, when they say cars, me they mean, and if this was 1848, you would know, I wouldn't have to explain, they mean train cars, all right? And a team is a team of horses with, with the wagon behind it. Now in 1848, in Stowe, we did not have a railroad. It would be coming down to Gleasondale in another 10 years. But in West Acton, they had a train. And here, when the train whistle blew, we could hear the whistle. Actually, we didn't even want the train because down right by Center School and Hale School, we were the center of the stagecoach. We had huge um, barns full of horses. The stagecoaches would come from Fitchburg, stop in Stowe on their way to Boston. We didn't want a train in Stowe at all. Can you imagine? That's where they wanted to put it, right down Main Street, right where Center School is. You, can you imagine what that would have done to the town? So it's a good thing we didn't have it. So we can, we, can you people in the back see that okay? Can you see the picture? It's, it's a little tough. The picture is very, very tiny. Okay? This came out of a little teeny book that the Peck family used, Sammy Peck used. Here it is, and I have to open it very carefully. You can see it's falling apart. There's the picture. See that little teeny thing? There's no way you can see it, all right? Now these two students are going to ha read a dialogue, and we have Carrie and Caroline. Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So you come on up. I have master copies if you if you would rather read. Are you girls good with those or do you want the other one? Okay. I, pr I printed it out big. All right, so one, I'll hold this, I'll hold that. There you go. Now we, I just have to stand beside you, have the mic. All right, now I want you to use your really strong voices, okay, to project all the way so they can hear you in the back of the room. Here we go. Have you ever seen a train of cars on the railroad, Caroline? Yes, and I once had a fine ride in the cars, too. Well, I saw a train once, but it went so fast I should not dare ride on it. Oh, fine. I have no fears. I know they run off the track once in a while, but what of all that? What of all that? Why don't you know when they run off the track there was a great smash-up? And some are killed and some may lame for life. And do you say, what of all that? I have heard of some such cases, but I went safe and I had no smash up as you call it. They sometimes scare teams too, so that lives are lost in that way. I have a picture of, some, of such a scene in my book. Well, men ought to know the time for the cars to come along and take care of their teams. Then there will be no danger. I think the men that own the cars ought to pay for all the damage they do. Too, but I think that both should keep a sharp lookout. Then there will there will be no such mishaps as to speak up to either teams or cars. Excellent. Way to go. I got two in there. Okay. So now they would have had that totally memorized. And all of you would have been on stage here presenting it to the committee. Hmm. You think you could do it? Yes. What was an expectation that this is the way it was going to, going to be? So when you look around here, one thing I didn't talk about were the windows. We had the same number of windows, but the windows were 10 inches higher and they went up towards the ceiling because at first they felt that having windows would be a distraction. All right, just like we have traffic. We didn't have to worry about traffic because it would be a horse or a carriage. Is that your bus? I guess so. It seems early, but we just, it's only 117. Okay. It might be a school bus for a Okay. I mean, I thought we were here until 1.30. Okay. So I, we just have to check the time here. All right. So th then in 1851, when they changed the desks to these metal, metal desks like here, they decided it would be a good idea to lower the windows because it was important for scholars to have more fresh air and better light. So now this morning, when the class was in, no, two classes this morning, it was very dull and drab. 
Did I turn the lights off this time? I'm, I'm getting, I get, can't remember anymore. Okay, so this morning when we turned the lights off, this side of the room had some light, and this side of the room was really dark. And that's with windows on all of these sides. And so they relied on the natural light. So this morning, the, the two classes really understood how important having daylight was and why you needed so many windows in, in this classroom. Um, on the back wall, we have a picture of one of our former students. Uh, her name is Willina Peck. It was one of uh, the, the Peck family. We have her textbooks. Uh, she was in this school in, in 1900. She graduated from the Women's College Medical School in Baltimore. She was one of the early doctors in the United States. And for two years, she actually lived in Stowe. She rode a bike or a horse or walked to where she treated patients. So she was a doctor in Stowe. So from this house right here, the schoolhouse, we had a very solid education presented for, for our scholars, just as you are. But can you imagine if you had, now these gentlemen here, it's, it's getting to the end of the day, and you have a wood back, at least some of you have your back, that's not, it's not that comfortable, is it, back there? Yeah. All right, our early, our, early back, our early benches had no backs. It was just a bench. And maybe it would be backed up to the desk behind you. Can you imagine what that would have been like all day sitting on it? Wouldn't be very comfortable, would it? No, we certainly wouldn't. So with that, yes? Do you have assigned seats? They, 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 they didn't do as, they might have had assigned seats. I don't, I'm not sure, but what I do know is that they had the youngest up front, and then they had it by skill level going back. Um, so I, if being a teacher, I would say they probably had assigned seats. Um, because sometimes we, we don't do well sitting next to certain people. I used to call it being my abutter. I mean, sometimes it's better if you don't sit against, because sometimes you like to elbow. Right, guys? Yeah, or you, or you like to, um, or with the long, people, all the girls had long hair. And one of the problems with the long hair was that with these desks, are so, they were so close. You see right here, with, now, if the hair was longer, Zach, who wouldn't think of doing it, could have dipped her ponytail right into his ink. That's mean. All right, yeah. which, which is mean. <laughs> Um, and if he did that, he would try, probably join Ebenezer here in the corner for not paying attention. I don't know, did we introduce Ebenezer? Okay, one of the things in school here is that when, if there was discipline problems, they would put you in the corner. Sometimes they would put you on a, a box that was very thin, so you'd have to keep your balance, which made it tricky. Um, other, other times, if it's, if it's in the winter time and you had the male teacher, um, he actually had a whip um, and it was perfectly okay to use. They would, um, from what I've read, the, the teacher would tell the, the student in advance that he was going to get the punishment or she would get the punishment the next day because we had some very interesting stories how students, knowing that they had received their punishment the next day, they would take animal hides and they would put it under their clothes so that it wouldn't sting as much because they knew they had been wrong and they were trying to protect themselves. Others, um, other students sometimes, with, when the instructor wasn't looking, they would take this flu and they would remove it so the smoke filled up the classroom. Um, so were the students full of practical jokes? Yeah, and we have some really good stories about that. Here's one great little story we have. Here, in this school, we have mice. Any of you have mice in your house? Hey, we have them, all right? And this is, there's no insulation in this school. And here, this little boy, right here, he was sitting near the stove where we have the tongs, and this is where you move the logs in here, the hot coals. 
he picked up the tongs and he said, by George, I caught it. He caught a mouse and it was put outside. All right? So that was interesting. Another story we have is that this little boy had a very hard time sitting still. And when you were very good in class, the teachers gave, gave you a reward of merit, a little piece of paper, and it was a very prized possession. And he never brought one home, never brought one home. And then one day, he came in all excited and showing it to his mother, and she said, what, what changed your behavior? And he said, the teacher wore such a pretty dress. I looked at it all day. That's our little, so we have a lot of these little tidbits of, of stories. And dresses, like mine, this is seven yards of material, a lot of material. Um, ladies, you would be wearing a long dress. You would have an apron on because it helps, I would have, have, the teacher would have an apron on because it helps to keep it clean because you usually only had one other dress. It was all hand sewn, it took a lot of work, and that's all the families could afford. Gentlemen, you had a pair of pants and a shirt. You probably wore a straw hat. Uh, ladies, you had probably had a bonnet or a straw hat. You would probably have two sets of clothes. And so like this little boy here who received an award, we actually, in the Stowe Historical Society, have two of these actual rewards that were given to a student in 1863 and we'd have them under glass here because we want to protect them because they're such treasures and what what are those boys doing in that picture um i think they're using a bat for something a bat so what what, what sport is that if we have a bat what is it baseball baseball they're playing baseball and when we saw this we said oh my goodness because baseball was a brand new sport they were just forming national teams, and for them, to, on a reward, to have picturing baseball, it was absolutely, we were just blown away. And down here we have a little girl and she's tending to her garden. And so what we've done is that when you go back to school, Ms. Abano has uh, copies of these, and you can, she's gonna print your name in it, and you were gonna receive your reward, okay? We made copies of these for you, so you'll get them when you go back to school. Because, because we wanted your name on it, and there's just so many third graders that we wanted to make sure that um, we had the, the spelling correct. All right, so what we're gonna do now is that since this class, you know, remember in January, we, we got to take a pic class picture? When I was in your classroom with, with all the Indian Harrow heads? Yeah. Well, here you are, again, you're the last group, and guess what we get to do? We get to take a picture, okay? And we are gonna try to pose it just like this picture, in front of the door, all right? So that means that we're gonna put some benches out. Some are gonna be on benches, and some are going to, be, a few people might be sitting on the rocks, and then some of them are gonna be around the, on the steps beside me. So what we need to do is we need to stand up very carefully so you don't bump your neighbor and we're gonna go outside and we are going to get ourselves a group picture of West School. All right. Okay, let's see.
Thank you.